Hey guys, thanks for having me. My name is Karim Boktor. I'm the founder of the Boktor Method and I am a uh, leadership hypnotherapist. I help people unblock their emotional and mental challenges to uh, be more successful and earn more money, but also be more happy and fulfilled at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we dive deep into the journeys of remarkable individuals that are paving their way to success. I'm your host, Braspa Taruvinga, and today we have a guest who embodies the epitome of transformation, resilience, and prosperity. Now, Karim, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for a great introduction. Oh, we haven't even started yet. It's quite surprising. We actually probably live in the same neighborhood, but we haven't actually, um, you know, our parts haven't actually met in person, but we're going to fix that right away, right? 100%. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, for those that are unlike me who haven't met Karim, Karim is the founder of the Business and Life Coach, or is the Business and Life Coach. And he's not just your run-of-the-mill coach. He's a maestro in personal and professional breakthroughs. And like I've mentioned, he's based here in Melbourne, but he has just recently been crowned an international speaker. And we're going to be talking about that. And he's actually created his own coaching success from his own life experiences and cutting edge technology um, of neuroscience and hypnotherapy. We're also going to be looking into how that happened and who he has become today. All right. And at the end of the day, you know, so many of us go through journeys in life, but we never get an opportunity to sit back and reflect how that all came to be. And I'm hoping that Karim is going to be um, helping us realize that whether you're battling with maybe a severe starter or no, you don't know how to actually um, start and scale a business that you can um, be proud of. These things that you can do to change all of that. Now, Karim, like I told you earlier on, I'm probably going to be, um, you know, shaking in my boots because I'm in front of celebrity right now. I've known about you, seen you and heard a lot about you, and I'm dying to hear your side of the story. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually got started into this realm of business and personal coaching. Right question. Right question. Um, so I think it all came for me when I was later in, in my career, when I was wanting to, uh, start a new business, it wasn't a, a first business of mine. I was pretty confident. And, uh, at the same time, when I settled in and opened up my new business, I had my first child and it felt like a truck had hit me because I was going into work always on the back foot. I was sleep deprived because my son had colic and we didn't even know it. So for those who don't know, colic is um, a digestive uh, issue where babies have, where they've got a lot of gas and he was waking up every 20 to 30 minutes. So I was going into work sleep deprived uh, and slowly and slowly um, it was getting worse. I couldn't really lead my team. I couldn't make business decisions clearly. And because of this getting worse and worse and I wasn't sleeping, I was getting more anxious. I was getting more depressed. All these things started coming up for me. And then one day I hit a brick wall and I was, um, my wife found me laying, um, curled up into a ball after she took my son for a walk. She came in, she found me curled up into a ball crying uncontrollably because I was just so scared where my business was going. I was scared that I couldn't pay rent. I was scared that I couldn't pay my staff. Um, it looked like like hell for me. Uh, I felt like I was going through quicksand. I was going through like a merry-go-around and I couldn't really help myself or the business. And at that point, I had already seeked business coaching. Um, I had seeked the, you know, the help of the best um, consultants. I had just finished my MBA. I had uh, completed many businesses in the in the past. I had spoke to, uh, spoken to counselors in the past too. 
but nothing was was helping. They were all temporary um, reliefs. Like, you know, they, they've given me like a, a temporary um, relief, but nothing was really giving me the um, the results that I was looking for. So I went through my own self journey and my own self reflection. And I knew that something inside of me was holding me back. So it wasn't mechanical. It wasn't a marketing thing. It wasn't a strategy thing. It was something within me that was holding me back that was allowing me to keep crashing my business. And when I when I knew what that was, it was a big eye opener for me. It was like a big revelation and it really changed me and my business. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that journey. And it's, you know, when you're talking about, you know, having your first child and, you know, not knowing what to do pretty much after that, that really changes a lot of people and um, and things mm -hmm. of that nature. But before the child was born, what, what sort of work were you involved in that got you to then get started on your business? So I was in pharma. So I was in pharmaceuticals. I got into pharmaceuticals. Um, how I got there is a whole new story. Uh, after school, I knew that I wanted to help people and I wanted to improve you know, people's lives, the, the quality of people's lives. But I didn't really get the marks that I did in high school. I probably had a lot of learning um, behavioral challenges. I probably had ADHD, dyslexia. Um, and so... Um, the only marks that I that I that I could get into something that I really wanted was into remedial massage therapy. So I started my own business uh, at the age of twenty one. So I was working inside a clinic at a GP um, at a doctor's clinic, and I would see people coming in. Um, then I'll also see uh, reps coming in, and I didn't really know that this was a job in the first place. I didn't know that this was a thing where um, representatives from medical companies would, would come in to try and sell their products to the doctors. I had no idea that this was even a thing. And I really loved sales at the time. I had some sales experience and I thought to myself, this would be a really good job because it meant that I could pretty much run my own business within a business. So um, I interviewed for three years being told no. Um, I was told no because I didn't have a uh, a bachelor's degree, uh, specifically in science, and because of that, I wasn't regarded as someone that they really wanted to take to take on. But I didn't let that stop me. I was really determined, and it became like a second job <laughs> of uh, looking for work, uh, interviewing, and being told no constantly over and over. Part of the reason why I think I was told no was because I had a stutter. So when I was going to interviews and uh, managers and hiring managers and HR were asking me questions, I knew the answers to the questions, but I couldn't answer it because I had a stutter. I didn't tell them I had a stutter because I was worried of being humiliated and being judged. You know, how can we hire someone who had a stutter? So I kept it close to my chest and, um, you know, when they noticed my long pauses and when they noticed that I was stuck in my words, it probably contributed to the fact that they, you know, didn't think that I was a really good hire. But I kept at it and I kept practicing and I kept turning up with the stutter and one day um, I was told yes, that I was going to be hired. Um, I was wanting to take a job from anyone really. But at the time, I was blessed. I was uh, hired by Australia's biggest pharmaceutical company at the time. And I couldn't believe it. Uh, in my head, I was like, are you sure you want to hire me? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I was pinching myself. And there was actually quite a while where I thought this was all a joke or, you know, they were going to change their mind or they were, you know, going to take away um, because they gave me a car for, for the job. Um, and as a young kid, that was that was that was a huge thing for me. So whenever I was driving the car, you know, like in the company car, I was thinking they were going to take this any time away from me. Um, 
but they didn't. <laughs> in fact, I ended up staying in there for four years. I uh, ended up being one of the highest performing um, territory managers, sales reps. And it was just a natural progression for me to go into the next thing, uh, into the next challenge was to go into uh, serve uh, surgeons. So into go into um, medical devices. So not long after that, I um, was successful in getting a job into medical devices. So one of California, one of America's biggest um, medical devices company um, hired me. So they took me to California to train for two weeks, pretty hardcore training. Um, came back and in no time I was... Um, coaching surgeons while I was scrubbed up in, in surgery with them while they were in surgery. Um, yeah. Coaching them on how to use our, use our medical devices while they were operating. Wow. That's, that yeah. is, that is something else. And congratulations on all those, um, you know, achievements, because as you say, you started off at a place where talking in and of itself, would have been the hindrance but you persisted so many people would have given up what do you think was the main thing that was driving you to want this so bad was that to prove something to yourself or to somebody in your life i think it's actually even deeper than that and that's a great question so and i'm getting goosebumps actually uh before i even tell you because it was a huge moment for my parents so my parents came to Australia um, because they were being persecuted in Egypt. Dad was a big, successful businessman. Uh, he was wholesaling petrol. But because of political unrest, um, they told him that they didn't want him being there anymore. They didn't want him being so successful. And if he didn't leave the country and leave his business, then they were going to hurt his family. Um, moments later, they heard his name, you know, men were calling out people, um, who were they were going to kill on the streets and they yelled out my dad's name. And it wasn't long before then where he came to Australia. Um, he came to Australia with my mum and three kids, including me with no job, um, no money and no language. Um, I came here when I was about two. And it was pretty rough for us at the start, especially for my dad, uh, for my mum and dad. Um, we didn't have a house or place to go to. We were pretty much homeless. We were um, living with um, cousins and aunties and stuff until the government gave us a place to stay in, in housing commissions. So I was a young boy and my eyes had opened up to a lot of things that I shouldn't have seen. A lot of violence, a lot of, um, you know, drugs and not me personally, but uh, witnessing people, you know, taking drugs and being all over the place, not seeing the best in humans. Um, a lot of, you know, abuse um, out on the streets and in and around where we lived. So my parents were probably going through a lot of stressful times. Probably, they're probably thinking, what the hell did we do? We were, you know, escaping... Um, you know, to go to a better place. And now we've put our children in possibly something even just as, just as bad. Mm. So I think when I, when I, when I look at back then, I look at the way that my parents chose to give us a better life and they did everything and they were very persistent and they were very, um, very strong and resilient. So when someone t tells me no, uh, I look at how, how, how am I going to be given a yes? Because my parents came and traveled all the way from around the world with nothing. Just because someone tells me no, I'm not going to accept it as a no. And I'm going to give them the reason why, um, I, I'm, and I'm going to give my parents a good reason why, why they came to Australia for me. Absolutely. Hey man, I, 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 viscerally understand and especially the game that your dad was playing you know fuel is what moves the country and so many bad actors 
end up wanting to own that line of business and trade and everything else that comes along mm. with it. Even the wars that are being fought in the world right now, they're based on oil. So I can only imagine, you know, your dad obviously going through that. And I'm going to ask you this with utmost love and respect, Karim. Sure. Now, would you think that the starter would have been a response to the trauma that you would have been going through at that age because at two having seen like you say the things that you saw and as a kid the only way would be to retreat back inside and and just protect yourself by not saying nothing right question yes <laughs> <laughs> so my my part of my journey was to really understand why i was stuttering and a lot of the times I didn't really understand. I went to speech therapy. That didn't really help. Um, but it was, it was when I looked on the inside, I really understood my my stutter and why I stuttered. See, I came, so it wasn't long after that where I started school. And I was bullied and I was teased because I was the only Egyptian and because I was, um, you know, I was overweight, but I was also a stutterer. So the teachers just thought that I couldn't speak English. At the time, I had been in Australia for uh, three or four years. I was pretty much more Australian than I was Egyptian. I could speak English. Um, I, could, I probably couldn't speak Arabic at the time. Um but I went to school and I didn't speak because I didn't want to be humiliated by, by how I sounded. I didn't want to be teased. So the teachers got mistaken and they thought that I couldn't speak English. So they put me into a different class and they moved me and they isolated me from my peers. And they took me where the, where the, where the kids called, where the dumb kids go. So they put me into ESL. And... Um, to answer your question about my stutter, for me, it wasn't my verbal stutter that really held me back. It wasn't, it, it wasn't my verbal stutter. It was what I like to call my inner stutter, mm -hmm. my inner beliefs, what I thought about myself, what really stopped me and held me back from being confident, from being that, that child that could be like everyone else. Um, it was my inner stutter that co that caused my verbal stutter. I can imagine. I can imagine. And obviously going through all of that, um, you know, even the housing commission that you mentioned, that was just like coming from a frying pan into the fire in and of itself yeah. where, you know, you, you know, your parents would have wanted what's best for you and, only to then you know get a lot more than they bargained for so i can imagine why this would have been important for you to go through these three years of really trying to get this position just so that at least you can give something back to the parents yes definitely yeah absolutely well good on you for um having chosen that now you went on and started your own business um, you know, the first one that you did, which is a 21, you know, remedial um massage, and then and then when you then had your first um, you know, your kid. So walk us through what it was now like, you know, pretty much coming from a space of having worked in sales, pharmaceutical, and all these things, and having to start by yourself. Yeah, so and even and even in in between when I was in pharmaceuticals, I had started uh, businesses and I was in investing in 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 businesses, but going out and starting on my own, um, into an industry where I didn't really understand and know about and didn't have experience of was very scary. Um, especially <clears throat> the industry that I went into was hospitality. So it was a restaurant cafe. And what I'm told now is like, oh my gosh, that's a whole different league. <laughs> so um, 
you know, I over, I've always dreamed about having my own restaurant. I love food and I'm a foodie and I love cooking and I love serving people. So the glamour and everything that was behind it didn't really um, come out to what it actually was going to be. Um, it, and it was very, yeah, it was very scary. A lot of hard work. It wasn't really what I thought it was. Um, so, yeah, it was really tough. Absolutely. But you managed to, you know, beat the odds. I mean, look at you now. You're an international <laughs> Uh, speaker and um, so many people lay a claim to your methods and methodologies um, and things of that nature w w what's it like for you now it's definitely been a journey um, because finding out that the reason why I was finding it hard and it was difficult wasn't really about anything else other than what, what was happening inside my head what, what were my beliefs what were my values what what was happening inside my subconscious mind. So now it's like the only thing that can stop anyone really uh, is you, is yourself, is what you believe in yourself, what you think are your own boundaries and your own parameters. Um, those are the real things and challenges that are holding people back. You know, for like, for a brief moment, I was consulting in, in people into businesses and I would go and I and I'd often go into businesses and I would diagnose them with the you know what was happening in the business, what was wrong in the business, and I would often come short all the time, and I would often see a pattern. I would come back to the business three or three or six months later, and they'll always be back to where they were when I left off with them. And it was because it wasn't because of you know their their marketing. It wasn't because of anything else. Um, their inability to lead. They, you know, they were complaining about their staff leaving them. They were worried about, you know, they weren't getting enough uh, profits and all those kinds of things. You know, they're all key words, but it was never the core reason. Was never about this initially. It's always initially about them internally. What's happening inside of them? So with me and where I am now, um, I'm wanting to spread the word. You know, half it's like it's it's like my life's purpose. That's why I'm wanting to speak and become an international speaker. It's not because, you know, uh, something that I just decided I wanted to do. It's like I promised myself that if I got myself out of this and I found myself having a solution to this, that I'd go off and tell the world. Because a lot of these business owners don't know. A lot of these people in in a professional setting, no one's talking about this. You know, a lot of people are spruiking about, AI and the spruiking about marketing and the spruiking about, you know, content and copy and all these types of things. But the biggest blind spot in people's lives is them. It's in their subconscious. You know, there are many articles and journals, scientific articles and journals that talk about how 80 to 90% of your subconscious is related to where you are at the moment in your life. And no one's even batting an eyelid. No one's even exploring and looking at why they are where they are at the moment. You know, they often think that it's a a story that they tell themselves, you know, that they often think that it's a, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's where I've come from. It's, um, it's my, it's because of this that's happened in the past or, you know, this is just who I am as a, as a person and it's because of this. And it's often the story that we tell ourselves. Mm. and I feel like it's my life's purpose to tell people, okay, well, tell me where you want to go and tell me that you actually want it and we can work through it um, and I'll get you there, <laughs> regardless of your story. Absolutely. And this is, the, this is the blind spot. Well, I visually concur with what you're saying there, Karim, because so many people are always looking for that external validation external something whereas if they look within that's where they would get most of the answers yes but karim within is scary very and and not a lot of people are happy to do that i mean you would have noticed you live in melbourne 284 or so days that we were locked in and 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 and, and people were forced to look within instead of go out to some sort of a job that validates who you are and then come back 
and just maybe spend two or three hours close to looking at yourself in, in your own habitat. So I, I don't think people are prepared for that. And and there's, there's reasons maybe why people may not venture down that 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 track yes yes it is i mean from the outside um you know people i'm like oh my gosh i don't want to you know look into something that's happened or you know i don't want to go back into you know but a lot of people don't even know that they can't even sit with their own thoughts that they're constantly having to um distract themselves either by working too much or Netflix or socializing. So as soon as I ask people what would happen if you didn't do all that, they'll be like, oh no, I can't do that. Have you asked yourself why? Like what what happens? So there is a perception that there that it is scary. But for me, it is liberating. And um what I've noticed is that when people look at others for success. They look at, oh my gosh, look at that person, you know, they're so successful and they're happy and they're fulfilled and they would love to have that life. Well, if I told you that the secret is to looking within and understanding yourself, a lot of people will turn away. So my job isn't to help everyone because a lot of people don't want to be helped, but it's those few people, the 1% that want the best and that are prepared to go and get that, those are the people that I work with because those are the people that are wanting better for them and, their, and for their family and for their life. And they're willing to do whatever it takes. Absolutely. Now, Karim, you know, in the world that we live in right now, you know, I could just download food or I could just yell at people while behind the screen, or I could just distract myself while you speak and things like that. And my day moves and there's so much destruction and I think that's being done on purpose and I can viscerally understand what you're saying because the people that are working hard to get this information and this destruction and take away people's attention they're not taking a day off so you must have processes and systems to leverage yourself then in order to make that happen because that 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 would take <laughs> a tremendous amount of an undertaking, especially on your part. What sort of methodologies have you sort of used in order to start helping, um, you know, people to start really focusing within? So the Boktor method is what I'm the founder of, is a method where I like to use, it's a combination of all the best things that I've learned in human behavior um, to give people success and to get them where they want to go. So it's a mixture of hypnotherapy, NLP, Dr. D. Martini method, uh, timeline therapy, and a lot of uh, and a lot of other things in there as well. And I help people get into their subconscious um, because this is where often where everything lives, everyone's values, everyone's beliefs. Um and I and it's the fastest way of trans of transformation is by getting into people's subconscious. And it's not like what you see on TV. It's not like I'm going to take away control and make you cluck like a chicken and all those types of things. It's actually just sort of like deep meditation, deep guided meditation. Uh, you're always in control. Um, it's like having, it's like us having a chat now, but you're just with your eyes closed and you're just a little bit more relaxed. Um, and this is what I found is the easiest and best way of getting from someone from A to B. Right. And with, you know, you having done this, obviously you've been successful in your own right. And now you're, yes. passing, you're passing down the elevator to help others, you know, be doing, have a happier existence as well, using yes. this sort of, um, you know, Bokta method, you know, would you have maybe without mentioning any names yes. or showcasing who the actual person is, what sort of results have people been receiving from this, um, you know, methodology that you've used? Some of the people that I've worked with have said, Karim, you really need to get your, your story out there. And I'm happy to be, put myself out there. Like I've got people that I put, on my websites, on my uh, Facebook page, Instagram, LinkedIn, that have had massive success in their business. Uh, I worked with someone from Sweden 
who started off with um a pizza truck uh van like a like a you know like a food truck and now he's um he's won two international um swedish um entrepreneurship of the year awards he's now got one of the best successful shops in sweden for pizza um There's another one where I've done a, a, a recent documentary with um, some farmers in South Australia where they are um, where they have uh, been really successful in 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 what they're doing. They're a certified organic business called Organic Box. And they are yeah. There's many stories, you know, where they where <clears throat> One of the founders in there was terrified of public speaking, terrified of going out there and um, making herself known and, you know, often ashamed of just speaking to new clients. There's no amount of um, marketing or there's no amount of business consulting that can fix them, that can help, that can help her with this. So we took away this shame and we took away her fear around this thing. And now she's uh, speaking with governments to help push her um, her her stance on certified organic because a lot of the reasons why a lot of these farmers can't can't do much with because of the the legal um, boundaries that these that these governments impose on them. So now she's going out there and she's leading the way in certified organic. She's speaking at public events now. She's doing all these things. So there are many, yeah, more than my count, more than my fingers can, you know, can actually count the amount of people that I've been able to serve and hold is because we've been able to go into their subconscious, rewire how they think and behave and feel about an old behavior that wasn't serving them. You see, you're literally handing people back to themselves. You know, they, they are still the same person, but now they're new and improved only because they have shedded all those misconceptions, old beliefs and everything else that comes along with it. Because each and every one of us is just going through lives collecting stuff, but we're not letting go of things that no longer serve us. And you then take them through this methodology and eventually... Now they can speak in front of audiences bigger than they would have ever thought, you know, governments, like okay. you said, and yes. move on the human race. Yes. Yes. It's, yeah, it's, it's been an amazing journey for these people that I've been able to help to liberate, you know? Um, but again, it's only those people who actually want it. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people, they come and they complain about where they are in life at the moment. Um, and then I ask, well, are you looking for a solution? You know, and they're not really looking for a solution. They're just looking more just to vent out and complain about where they are at the moment. And that's okay because, you know, it, it, like even though they're complaining, it, it's serving them in a way. It's, you know, they're comfortable where they are, even though they, they're complaining about it. But there are a lot of people out there that are looking for exceptional results. They're looking for performance. They're looking for better. They're looking for more. Absolutely. You know, while you're talking, I was just looking into this. Your methodology is like a six-step process to literally re reclaim your, your personality. I mean, if the B would stand for become, become who you want to become, the O, what are the obstacles that are actually in your way that we need to face? And then K, well, kickstart, like really get started. And then what are the tasks? That's the T, the O look at what the opportunities look like and then are the, the results what would it look like when you have arrived i, I love that <laughs> i love that because it's this awesome. is exactly what it is that you are bringing to the table and in six easy steps mm. people can literally reclaim who they are and everything else that comes along with it what would be the best way that people can get a hold of you then karim and um undertake the bokta method so i'm everywhere um i'm karimbokta.com um you've got uh my instagram linkedin facebook um youtube i've also got a youtube channel as well where i'm um doing some more podcasts with people telling their story so um i'm also going to be 
just for the audience um, here today, I'm going to be giving them a 30 minute free link where if they're wanting a, a, a 30 minute um, breakthrough experience with me, then I'm going to be offering this with them too. That's It's not a sales call. It's not one of those things. It's, you know, totally obligation free. It's just us having a chat for them to know what I, what I do and for them to get a breakthrough. Um, yeah. In life. And Absolutely. in their business. Absolutely. I'll make sure that all those links are in the show notes there. And uh, hopefully, you know, people will get started in working with you. Now, when we started this call, Kareem, the first mm. thing that you mentioned was you being a dad or being a father um, mm. and how that literally brought you to you know, that fetal position that you were speaking about, because now you had yet another responsibility and you had become something that you were ne not before. Now, how mm. has your journey as a father really influenced your coaching philosophy and, and who you've become now? It's totally from a different perspective, right? Um, so now when I see my, my child, I'm living and looking through him life, I'm 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 seeing life through him as a as a as a child, and I can see his perspective and his points of view, that I can also now guide other parents that are also going through some um, problems in their in their journey. Uh, parenthood is not something that you pick up a book, you know, and you read something about. It's not something that you that, you know that that you're taught at school or at university. So a lot of these business owners or professionals that I work with, a lot of the issues and problems is connecting uh, with their with their kids, and it's often a projection about how they were as a as a child and how they were raised, which is causing a lot of their challenges and their problems in becoming a present father or mother. And I help guide them through, um, you know, what what is it is actually that's triggering you that. You know, you're being frustrated or that you're being, um, you know, not really present in the moment with your kids. You know, like, what's all that about? I know for me that earlier on, before I did this type of work, that I really wasn't present. I really wasn't wasn't connected to my son. I couldn't really communicate well with my wife. And a lot of that had to do with my... Um, the frustrations and the disconnects that I had with the teachers. I had a lot of uh, anger and frustration that was bottled up inside of me as a, as a child. And I was projecting it onto my own child. Um, my parents were beautiful, but they were working so much, so many hours just to provide food and provide us with books and uniforms that, um, I really wanted them to have, you know, to be around more, but they couldn't. So my thought and idea was that I also had to work hard. You know, I had to do the same things because I brought on those same beliefs and same ideas. But it was all wrong. It was all incorrect. Kids just want to be connected with, and they want to you know, spend some time with you and you want, they want you to be present. So, Understanding this is a, is another layer of where I am today and how I could add value to people's lives too. I can imagine. I remember when I had my first uh, girl. You know, I would be I'd be holding her. She's crying, and I'm crying on the phone trying to get a deal <laughs> going. And it was just, <laughs> you know, and I I can imagine having come into a country where you know like your parents I knew no one knew nothing about the system and all I just wanted was a safer environment and just to make things work and um you know what I mean so having to start a business being a dad being a husband all at the same time I I, I can come care with who you become and just having spoken to you I can feel the happiness that you know you've created for yourself and I can imagine um yeah you you have created something remarkable for yourself but 
mm. your parents and who they were was based on what they knew at that particular time and yes i'm i'm guessing now maybe dad is still with us right or yeah 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 i mean dad is still with us fantastic and what 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 does dad think of the man you've become uh he's very proud um and i'm very actually very proud of him because of where he's come so he came with nothing and he's been able to build uh, a couple of successful businesses now so even though that he had you know nothing and he started with nothing um slowly but surely he re he rebuilt his success and he loves that i'm actually uh being able to help other other business owners as well becoming the best version of themselves earn more money earn more wealth and be a better parent Absolutely. I mean, there's nothing better than, you know, literally looking at the work of your hands unfolding in human form. And so many people don't get the opportunity to experience that. And I'm hoping that you would have, you are going to be doing that for your, um, you know, your children as well, just laying that path for them uh, along the way. But as a coach or as somebody who's gone through a journey that you have gone through, there's so many times that maybe you're speaking to someone else and then they tell you to maybe reflect and look at, um, you know, the person that you were or maybe have a consultation with that inner child or that younger self. Now, at the age of two, you know, you were forced to have to deal with life in, in the brutest way. And that sort of traumatized you um, up until you then figured that out. But that two year old was scared was you know didn't know what to do and like you said kids always need a hug and somebody to be there for them if you would maybe go back and sit down with that two year old what would you what would you tell him right now knowing what you know about your life and who you've become i would tell him to stand up to be proud because what you're going through now is the university of life. It's teaching you resilience. It's teaching you things that you would be able to adapt and adopt later on in your life and make you be the man who you want to be in helping other people. It's going to help you become more resilient. It's going to help you become able to communicate better. It's going to be help, uh, help you see things from different perspectives because you've been able to, you know, deal with it yourself. But let him know that everything is going to be okay and that you are going to be safe. Oh, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Now, obviously, from that kid that was stuttering, you're now, you know, a headliner, not only in speaking circuits, but TEDx, You've written uh, books and I've seen and heard about your work all around. What's next? What can people expect from uh, Karim moving forward? Any exciting projects or? Um... Yeah. So I've just launched my YouTube channel where I'm going to, where I ask people, um, professionals in their own right about their, um, how they became successful. But also like me, it's often how the reason why they're often, their, their story in the past has often got them to where they are today because of their resilience. But it's often the same story that's keeping them stuck into getting to the next level. So what I do is I help get them to understand what is their blind spots and what's holding them back. So in the, U so in the new YouTube channel, I'll be asking them and telling them why, why it is that they're being stuck, what is ho actually holding them back at the same time. Not just the usual, you know, like, let's just have a chat, but I also... Uh, give them a, a breakthrough. I'm also going to be uh, releasing a group um, uh, performance coaching uh, project where instead of going from one to one, I'm going to be going from one to many to help uh, accelerate um, yeah, businesses far and beyond to where they are at the moment and create a community around that too. Fantastic, man. Uh I can't thank you for the time that we spent on the call today. I mean, your life story and your experience have so much value for a lot of people 
that are just maybe looking at themselves and thinking war is me when they're not realizing that the war is within me. And, and I think you and your Bokta method and what you've been creating so far would literally help people be, do, and have a happier existence. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence on the Online Prosperity Show. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Fantastic. Like I said, um, for those that are watching, wow, loads of wisdom and insights, um, you know, from Karim Bokta there. And I urge you to check out the Bokta method um, and grab a few of the resources that are on his website. And um, I just want you to know that whether you're navigating um, you know, a job, corporate waters, or just wanting to chat your own entrepreneurial journey. There's people like Karim Bokta, the business and life coach that stand ready to guide you towards success. And if you found value in today's conversation, and trust me, I know you have, be sure to re-watch this episode because there's a lot of golden nuggets that you might have just, um, you know, gone through. And if you think this might not be for you, why don't you pass it on to somebody who's on the way up and they just might need this sort of inspiration, um, which might actually help them be, do, and have a happier existence. So while you're there, don't forget to subscribe for more enriching content that will actually move you towards your own prosperity and a successful future. Until next time, stay inspired and keep thriving. Bye for now. <music>